my all-time favorite explorer hero, Richard Francis Burton, once said, home is where the books are. Well, this is where all my favorite books are, in the artist library in Amsterdam. Oh, I've just arrived after an amazing trip to India and Pakistan, tracing the footsteps of perhaps the greatest explorer of all time, Burton. I've hunted for crocodiles, have seen more Kalashnikovs than I could count, and survived Indian traffic. But the most thrilling piece of the whole journey was the hunt for a lost secret report that cost Burton his army career, the Karachi Papers. I was born in the wrong century. That's what my friends tell me, and I'm afraid they're right. I should have lived in the 19th century, when most of the world still had to be discovered. I should have been one of those brave men who left the safety and warmth of their homes to explore the blank areas on the globe, those places where no white man had ever set foot. Without those men, the world would not be as it is today. In the last episode, I introduced you to the many faces of my hero, Richard Burton. And I showed you how prudish and narrow-minded Britain was during his lifetime, under the reign of Queen Victoria. Also, you should remember that if you had a piano and you were in the middle class, you made sure that that piano had straight legs. You covered them up, just in case the little curves excited your male visitor. I told you what a brilliant sportsman he was. How many books he wrote? 47, I 47. think. 47, yes. And how much they are worth today. Original in good shape, 100,000 uh, would okay. probably be uh, an accurate um, amount. I showed you his exotic grave and the glass window that portrays him as a saint-like Catholic knight. Oh, is that him here? Here? That's him kneeling uh, yeah. there uh, asking for absolution, I guess. Now, in fact, he was nothing like a saint. He was a rebel with a cause, for he traveled the world to explore all the things that would have given Queen Victoria an immediate heart attack. Exotic gods and religions, experimental drugs, and above all, sex and erotica. He placed a bomb under Victorian morality by introducing kinky books like the Kama Sutra and the Arabian Nights. Kama Sutra in pop-up. What's she doing? Bashing him with a slipper? <laughs> Slightly mysterious. Oh, I see. Yes, it's rather odd. <laughs> Some call him a genius. Others think he was a pervert. Burton was controversial right from the start as a young soldier in India. He, by his own account, writes this Karachi report, these papers exist, yeah. where he investigates the male brothels, homosexual brothels, in Karachi. And my fellow Burtonian, Bernie Lauser, could tell me even more. And that report uh, later cost him his army career. If it still exists today, um, it is probably in India. Uh, so do you think we could go to India and try and find this? You could certainly uh, uh, try. Uh, many people have tried. Oh, they um, have. You know, I'm not so sure they have all looked in the right places. Yeah. Um, it's certainly not here in England. Now, of course, these Karachi papers must be worth a fortune today. But to Bertonians like me, finding these papers would be like finding the Dead Sea Scrolls. So whatever it takes, I want to find these Karachi papers. Well, finally, I am about to arrive where Richard Francis Burton started his very first journey, India. It's 1842. 
Burton is only 21 years old. And as yet, he doesn't know that this is the start of a phenomenal career that will make him one of the most famous of all explorers. And why was he here? Well, the short answer is he found English society, and particularly Oxford society, insufferable, claustrophobic. Here, he had a feeling his real life might begin in Bombay, Bombay Harbour. The basics of exploring are essentially surviving each step you make. So getting seasick is okay, as long as you do not drown in the last few meters before reaching shore. Imagine young Richard, who's traveled for more than four months before he arrived here. And imagine his disappointment when he finally reached this place and only then heard that the Afghan war, for which he enlisted, was over. No fighting on battlefields for young Burton. Well, talking about battlefields. So young Richard Burton enlisted in the East Indian Company Army. Now, this army protected Britain's trade in the East. What trade, you might wonder? Well, mainly the trade between England and China in tea. Tremendous demand. Victorian ladies demand in Britain for tea, which came from China. But there was a problem. Chinese didn't want anything that uh, Britain produced, except silver. They wanted to be paid, insisted on silver. Well, there wasn't much silver in Britain. They really did not want to pay silver to the Chinese. So they solved the problem. With what? Answer, opium. You could grow high quality opium, wonderful poppies in India. And the export and import uh, harbor was right here um, in Bombay. All these buildings, everything built on opium money. That solved this problem. Well, half the population of Britain addicted to tea, half the population of China addicted to opium. What could be fairer? The city of Bombay was right at the heart of Britain's economic power play. And young soldier Burton had to find his way here. Burton introduced the word safari into English, originally from the Arabic, then into Swahili, and it means a long journey. And every time you get into a ritual in Mumbai, you are in for a safari. It's a strange feeling that more than 170 years ago, Burton walked in this very same market, the Bindi Bazaar. Burton stayed for seven years in this part of India, and in these years, he underwent a major transformation from naive soldier to a very well-educated military spy and explorer. I am preparing myself for a meeting with Ashok Roe Garvey. He is a well-known journalist and activist, and he knows a lot about Richard Burton and is convinced that Burton shared some of his preferences. So you think he was homosexual? Of course they all were. Oh. I not just think he was homosexual, he uh, was. Oh, OK. okay? <laughs> Ashok knows I'm a book maniac, and he takes me to a book market that looks like a dream to me, a labyrinth made only of books. So this is the place, is it? For... Yeah, this is the place. For an Indian, where, an Indian version. Yeah, the Indian version, the, the pirated version. It's highly unlikely wow, that we so find funny. any link to yeah. the Karachi papers here, but we do discover something I secretly hope to buy in India. Wow! Look at this radar. Huh? You were right. I told you, if you don't get it here, you won't get it anywhere. Is this? Of course, there are some books you cannot have enough copies of, especially if they are very well illustrated. Well, 
Wow. I think you should try and buy this. It might yes? not it might not be Richard Burton, but there might be a lot of Richard Burton quotes in it. Yeah. Harry Potter. The real box. You have, you. you have a wonderful copy of yes, the Carbon Take it off. Yes. To a dark yes. corner. And by the Enjoy. way, we also found a copy of yes. the Arabian Nights. Which, find, which? Uh, which really has a forward by Sir Richard Burton. And this, what I like about this, I'm very sure they haven't given up all the nice little scenes with the young men. Uh, hang, hang on. Um, yeah, it's getting a bit confusing now. Uh, here we have a copy of the Kama Sutra, illustrated. And here we have ten volumes of the Arabian Nights, both great literary works that were made available to the British audience through the efforts of Richard Francis Burton. Uh, Burton uh, saw this vast treasury of uh, literature and knowledge yeah. in the Orient, and they sort of translated it and made it uh, consumable, you know, yeah. Because not everything can be consumed. No. Uh, just like not everybody likes milk. So it has to be made differently and served properly. And I think Burton did that. He definitely made them consumable. But there was another highly explosive piece of writing by Burton. The Karachi Papers. Burton's superiors, his general Napier, were worried that their troops were engaging in homosexual practices in the boy brothels of Karachi. Burton was sent to investigate secretly the situation, but his report was so detailed that he was fired immediately, and these Karachi papers vanished and were never seen again. So do you think the Karachi papers will ever be found? Indeed, do they exist, do you think? I think the Karachi papers can be found. India loves collecting all the garbage, you know, the paper. Oh, so, yes. Yeah. So <laughs> we, we all do everything in triplicate. So, and we were taught that by the Brits. So uh, the, I'm pretty sure that uh, they're lying around somewhere. Ashok warns me it will be a very difficult mission. So he offers to help me to get access to some of the many historical archives. And through his contacts, we managed to get an appointment in the archives of the Asiatic Society. And for the first time in my life, I set all my hopes on bureaucracy and accurate record keeping. So maybe the Karachi papers are in here. We have an appointment with an old scholar, Mr. Virshant, Daramse, who is supposed to know much more about Burton's work oh. in India. Mr. Daramse, yeah. the great scholar. Well, I'm delighted, delighted to meet you. Uh, I'm very excited. And he has a You've surprise for us. He told the staff of the archives to bring out a very special manuscript. Ah. Yeah, this is the manuscript. Ah, how incredible. Huh? So that now uh, we will uh, go and uh, we'll have yes? a look at the kind of thing. Wow, huh? what a treasure. Wow. Oh, Wonderful that's building. We are going to sit there. I'm getting really excited. But this might be Burton's lost papers. And that would be sensational. Oh, that's true. I'm immediately going to call England to my fellow Burtonian, Bernie Lowser. For he has been looking for these papers all his life. You can see this is all require a very, oh, very, 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 is. very careful kind of thing. Yes. Huh? Yeah, last time, eh? Last time. Uh, so, this text is one of the edited, but this is one of the texts which he used for the editing the Kama Sutra. Yeah. Huh? And... Uh, oh, wait, 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 the Kama Sutra. I think we have a slight miscommunication here. This is definitely not the Karachi papers I hoped we were going to see. Still, these Sanskrit texts are linked to Burton. He probably used them for his controversial translation of the Kama Sutra into English. Despite my initial disappointment, I must say, Mr. Daramsey's tale is fascinating. These Kama Sutra texts are nearly as old as the Bible. 
and they were a guide to a virtuous and gracious way of living, advice on the nature of love and family life. But I can't help thinking there is something really kinky about sex in Sanskrit. And uh, like this, the other pages are there. Yeah. Uh, we can show you. We can show you one more page. It could be page. Uh, and I suspect that Mr. Darham say carefully skips the best bits. Now, this is the last page. Vasayaniya Kama Sutra Tika. So definitely hot stuff, but unfortunately not the Karachi papers. Now where else in this huge metropolis could these papers be? Mind you, they've disappeared for over 165 years. It's enough to make one desperate. I'm very glad that Ashok comes to the rescue and he offers to help me to find some of the other old Bombay archives. But he warns me it might take considerable time to arrange permits due to India's infamous bureaucracy. In the meantime, I want to visit all the places where Burton lived, from Baroda to ooh, even Karachi. I want to find out how Burton managed to transform himself into this unique undercover spy. And while I travel in Burton's footsteps up north, I realize it all starts with learning the local languages. Burton could speak 26 languages fluently. 26! My God. I suppose it all starts with learning one sentence. So, here in the English, at what rate are you selling potatoes? Can you tell me if this is right? Batakanu Shubav Chef. Batakanu Shubav Chef. Yeah? Batakanu Shubav Chef. Yes. Yeah. 10 rupees per kilogram. Yes, okay. From the very start, Burton immersed himself in the local Indian culture. Unlike his fellow British officers, he had an immense curiosity. He wanted to understand everything he saw. And he didn't restrict his interest to human beings. Hey, beauties. Ah. Now, I've got something for you. Now, are you listening? It's his wife writing about him. When Richard was in India, at one time got rather tired of the daily mess and living with men, don't blame him. And he thought he should like to learn the manners, customs, you know, listen, and habits of monkeys. So he collected 40 monkeys of all kinds of ages, races, species, and he lived with them. His great amusement was to keep a kind of refectory for them, where they all sat down on chairs at meals and the servants waited on them and each had its bowl and plate with the food and drinks proper for them. He stuck it out for several months with you and he learned 60 words. And then his notebooks were burnt in a fire. It's all very sad, yes, I agree. Time to leave the table, yes? Burton knew that as a secret agent for the British Army in India, he would have to disguise himself. And he would certainly have to be able to ride a camel like a local. Well, he didn't like being laughed at. So at night, he just picked any old camel and jumped on it right to, to ride it. <coughs> well, this camel bucked, kicked, ran at a tree, got beneath an overhanging branch, trying to throw its rider, and then after a long series of moves, ran straight for open water. And Burton jumped for his life. And the camel said, Burton, I beat you. This is probably the only time that Burton lost in the physical combat, and probably the only time that he really did get something wrong. Never ride a baggage cap. Always ride a riding cap. Thank you.
Burton was unrestrained in his efforts to go local and to immerse himself in the Indian way of living. He would start to dress and behave like a real Indian. And he was fearless and inventive in his disguises. Ultimately, he would even pretend to be a salesman just to get to talk to Muslim women, who would have run away immediately if they knew he was an officer from John Company. Burden made an intense study of human gestures, nonverbal communication, human behaviors of different peoples. And, well, I've been trying to get just one little simple thing right. The gesture you make here when you say yes. But my neck hurts and I don't get it right. He had to, because he wanted to become a secret agent. He, become, he became, well, he became one of the best that has ever been in the British Army. And here are just a few of his tips that he, uh, he writes down. How else would one possibly find these out but for Burton's hard work? We must not gesticulate at all when conversing. Extraordinary. Standing up, we must not cross our arms over our chests. In Europe, this is a la Napoleon. In the East, it is the posture of a slave. How would you know that? No one will tell you. And if musically inclined, we may hum a little in a low voice and with a solemn manner. We must, however, avoid the main error of a great traveler whistling. Impressive. Burton went even further. He made love to local women. He studied local religion, and ultimately he even converted to Sufism, a mystical part of Islam. So some of his fellow soldiers began to call him the white nigger. He was far too native for their taste. But Burton saw the treasures of Indian life, and in disguise, he used the alias Mirza Abdullah. Only a few years' time, he transformed himself from a regular British soldier to a completely convincing Muslim. And this ultimately led to an undercover assignment to investigate the liaisons between the Victorian soldiers and homosexual prostitutes in Karachi. Yes, so... This makes right. me curious. Yeah. How is my friend Ashok doing in Bombay in our quest right. for the Karachi papers? Ashok tells me that he needs more time to arrange for goodwill and permits, so I have to be patient. So you're watching the crocodiles? This yes. Is, yes? Yeah. And around, we are having around uh, more than 500 crocodiles in this area. Really? In this river. And in the monsoon season, this river is full of water. What, right up to? Well, up to there. Up to there? Up to there. Gosh. It's full, full of water. In that time, they, they get disturbed and they come out ah. in the city area. Yes. Well, they the come into the city? Yeah. In, the crocodiles the, come into the city? city. In the residential area. Wow. And, and, and have people been killed? Uh, sometimes, in a very uh, two days ago. Yes, of course. But one or one, two a year? Or? Yes. Excuse yeah. me. Did I hear that right? Two days ago, someone was eaten. Right, I want to show you something. There's this here of mine, Richard Burton, and somewhere in here. Ah, here we are. I just want to read you a passage. Um, you're sympathizing with the. Crocodiles. Um, it says, once jolly as monks or rectors. Hold it, hold it, please, O'Hanlon. We are talking crocodiles here. Big ones, real ones, 
not from the books. So stop the reading. There is a man-eater out there. Today we are going to track that animal. Maybe day after tomorrow, or the day or two, we'll rescue that animal. And take it somewhere else? Somewhere else. Maybe we'll take it to the zoo, because maybe yeah. that animal is ferocious. He, yes, he, or he's got he, a taste he, he, for he, he, human flesh. My new friend Harishi turns out to be a local wildlife protector. So, no Karachi papers tonight for me, or I am invited on a rescue mission. We are going to rescue primal killers. Two days ago, here's, uh, this is the report in the newspaper. Two days ago, um, this enormous crocodile snatched a 58-year-old man from the bank of the river. And as you can see, it's the middle of the night. And crocodiles, they're very clever. They, they wait in ambush, even behind bushes where you least expect them. Be careful, this is a risky site. Yeah. yeah, this is a place from that 58 years old man was yep. picked up. And this is his clothes. Oh, that's his clothes? Yeah. He was oh, sitting that's here. Horrific. And there's the water. This is the water. So it came really fast over really here. Last time he picked up the man. He was, he was sitting, sitting here, yeah. or he, he was the clothes. It's his he trousers. Yeah, his trousers. Yeah. Yes. Just putting that so, knee, and he all of a sudden he attack. He pull his leg and take him with the water. Ah. Gift can do we are But Harish, you don't even you don't even have a gun with you. No, we don't have to. You don't have guns? No, don't require guns. This is his site where he sit. You can see droppings of oh, the white stuff. Yeah, that's him. That's dropping off the like, crocodile. So that could be the dissolved yeah. remains of the, yeah. the, the man. Yeah. We have put this rope, one side that, one side this. Once he'll, he'll come this place, yeah. we'll bring it slowly, slowly down. Oh, I see. And we try to put him on a neck. You have to be very careful when we are... Sinister. It's really big. God, it's so well camouflaged. See? You'd never see that. It's you huge. See that. I think that's the yeah, one. That's the one we think we have to wait uh, till his actual behavior. Within the day or two, he'll start killing yeah. again. And he'll try to attack or he'll try to come out. Oh. Because we decide through a bite, that specific bite, the yes. big bite on the uh, that dead body. Uh, but this is all big. Yes, all big. Yes. All big. Will you catch one tonight? No. no. Today it's not possible. Too many Be crocodiles. Too many yeah. crocodiles outside the bank. And we are not still fixed with the, that specific hill no. man eater. No. Yeah. That is big. Well, back to the main purpose of my journey, finding Burton's Karachi papers. Now, I want to know what could be written in those Karachi papers. So my next stop is Karachi. But some things have changed since Burton's time. Today, as we all know, Karachi is no longer part of India, but the largest city in Pakistan. So I thought, Let's just cross the border, hop on a train to Karachi. But things appeared to be not that easy. Most of the time, it's quite an advantage to pretend the world is still like it was in the 19th century. Usually, it makes it a better place to live in. Altogether, I must admit, I was so obsessed with tracing the footsteps of Burton and finding the Karachi papers that I wasn't prepared at all for contemporary Pakistan. Hi, Hi Redmond. Very good to I'm meet you at last. I'm very glad to meet Kazim Raza, my local researcher and producer. 
Here we are in Karachi in Pakistan, just arrived from India and at a reception which I certainly was not expecting at the airport. We were picked up with a full police escort. We have two policemen in the car, in this car with us, armed with Kalashnikovs and a truck of armed police ahead. And well, it's all enough to make one extremely worried. I was told that there is one big road in Karachi that is named after General Charles Napier, the commander who commissioned Richard Burton to write his secret report. So I asked Kazim to drive past it. This is Napier Road. Uh, yeah, uh, this is the, spectacular. This is the Napier Road. Uh, so it's exactly here that Napier would have sent Burton someplace like this, yeah. because Burton went undercover. I mean, imagine, disguised uh, as a, um, well, as a shopkeeper, in fact. If he'd been discovered, I think he would have been killed at once. Definitely, he'll be end up in... Uh, disappear. Disappear, yeah. Why can't we leave the car, wait for the van? Why can't we get out? Uh, well, unfortunately, nowadays, this road is uh, under uh, so much insecurity. Ah. and trouble ah. uh, because this all area which we're passing through is uh, mostly under the war uh, gang war and uh, extremist groups all kind of uh, people who are involved in corruption and terrorism and uh, terrorist too. yeah right. it is dangerous in daytime or evening time or early morning time all times all times we just took the uh, risk we took the risk we, yes there is to come here. Kazim will put me in touch with the people described in the Karachi papers, the transgenders and homosexual prostitutes of Karachi. It was these ladies that General Napier was worried about. They might corrupt his soldiers' morals. And I want to know if their status has changed since Burton's days. Hello. How are you? Oh. Hi. Hi. Very pleased to meet you. I've got some questions for you. Thank you so much. Ah. Very high. No. Who are you? I'm uh, well, Redmond O'Hanlon, but, but um, the, the important character is called Richard Burton. And in the last century, he wrote a really detailed report okay. on your predecessors. Uh, yeah? And the report disappeared. And we don't know what was in it. Uh -huh. So you... That's, a, that's really easy. You can yes? join us on tonight to, to evening. Really? Yeah. Oh. Well, we are all invited for a little party later in the afternoon in their home on the outskirts of Karachi. Yeah. These ladies form a very tiny group amongst the immense population of 25 million Karachi citizens. I imagine it is a rough life they are forced to live, and I'm surprised by their hospitality. I hope they can tell me more about the probable contents of the Karachi papers. 150 years ago when Burton wrote this report, the Karachi Papers, Burton was not prejudiced at all. But uh, the report seems to have been very shocking to the British Army. Now, do you think that transgenders, eunuchs, they were treated differently 150 years ago? Is obviously, it worse now? Obviously. Yes? Obviously. I, I accept this one, uh, before 150 years old. The transgender living like as a respectable person. Yes. Not now. Now transgenders are not living like a respectable person, because and at that time was that time, they are more the pupils give more respect. Yes. When the transgender going in the street, everyone says salam alaikum, salam ah. alaikum, and take the dua. Transgender, please give me a dua. Wish. Wishes. Yeah. But now. Everyone think about that the transgender is just for us. This just oh. exists for is sex. That, what would happen if, to you if the Taliban won an election? If the Taliban were in 
power here. So then we will die. We are mm -hmm. murdered with Taliban. They, 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 they kill you? They kill us. Obviously they kill us because they don't like transgenders. God. Because they don't like our Ugh. our sex side and thing. Maybe he can do the suicide attempt mm -hmm. bomb in our parties, in our get together. They bomb you. They bomb you, obviously. And suddenly, I can imagine how Richard Burton, as a secret, undercover agent, could have got carried away in his investigations. But what makes it bizarre is the feeling that today, during our little party, I have a few gunmen at my side, while in modern Pakistan, these lovely ladies are really the ones that need permanent protection. We're being taken, uh, I suppose, very pleased about that, but we're being taken to the most luxurious hotel in Karachi. And why? Well, because it has the best security. It has police guards there in, in, uh, in watchtowers, armed with machine guns. I'm very pleased you're with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is my first moment today without a Kalashnikov in sight. Moving on to another of our top stories. Gunmen have stormed a hotel in Pakistan's remote northern region, killing at least 10 people. The Pakistani Taliban claimed responsibility for the attack. Targeting tourists, Orla, is that something new? They came under cover of darkness. They were wearing the uniform of a local security force. The next day, we decide despite the vicious attack reported on the news, to travel out of the city with our whole caravan into the backlands of Karachi, up the Indus River Valley. This region is called Sint, and Burton loved it here. We are going on a pilgrimage to a very special Sufi shrine along the Indus River, where Burton used to go. Halfway, Kazim wants to show me a local event just off the road, that he promises will bring back to life a peculiar passion of Burton's. <laughs> Despite his reputation as a sex maniac and a womanizer, Burton never had children. That is to say, there once was a rumor, when he lived here in this region, that he might have had a baby with his boo-boo or local mistress, but that the little child died. Burton always rejected this report as slander, and he swore that the little grave contained his favorite fighting cock. But I want to know, does that make any sense? Oh, no, no, we could solve this, I think. Do, do people in Sint, do they bury their cockles? Do they bury their, their fighting cocks? Well, uh, let me ask them. If they die in a fight, then what do you do? They take them or they take them? They take them. They take them. If the cock is uh, a very love to them, uh. then they go and bury that cock. Oh, they do. Because a lot depended on that question. Because yeah. I thought, well, we have it, because if people in Sindh bury their best fighting cockerels, yeah. then Burton did not have a baby. That made a lot of things plain. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and, and the champion. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Here in Sewan is the grave of the great Sufi mystic Kalanda. And to my surprise, today is the start of the annual pilgrimage festival. More than half a million pilgrims are expected to arrive today in this little town. And those numbers 
seem to make my bodyguards nervous. Or is it the temperature that makes them sweat? 50 degrees Celsius. Among all these 500,000 Sufi pilgrims, I hope to meet the greatest Burton fan in Pakistan, Masood Lohar. 20 years ago, he had a dream about Richard Burton, and ever since, my hero has been his role model. I decided to go to his grave, to his tomb. Wow. We, uh, you know, Sufis, have always uh, okay, some... So you're a Sufi. Yeah, yeah, always look for the last resting place. We believe that the human being doesn't go away and uh, uh, something like that. So, so in 1995... You made a, a pilgrimage, in fact. Yeah, Like exactly. coming here, only yeah, 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 yeah. the tomb's slightly smaller. Now, you, you talk just as if Burton was your elder brother. Um, so, I love that. Now, you might have an idea where our, our quest is to find his Karachi papers, if they still exist. Have you any idea where this manuscript about might, the might be? About yes, the homosexual yes, his, his, his report, it's just that... Well, there are a lot of controversies about Burton, and yeah. uh, to be, though he's my hero, um, to be very um, honest with him, um, he, he was into uh, dramatizing things. Uh, there is this controversy that that report was never written. Never written at all? Yeah. Oh, that's a new thing for Yeah. Me. So you admire the Burton who is, uh, um, from our point of view, a wonderful ethnographer. Uh, and to me, his writings about the people of sin seem, seem accurate. But, but are they? Burton's eye for detail, anthropologically, is amazing. And I, I call him as the father of anthropology. Sindh was the Burton's first laboratory for anthropology. Wow. He learned and trimmed his skill of anthropology and uh, uh, you know all his explorations here in Sindh. Yes. And even his uh, incognito and his uh, you know his disguises disguises yeah. also got perfected here in Sindh. Yeah. That was uh, possible for him to go later on to the pilgrimage to Mecca. Yes. And you'll be amazed to know that he even went inside Kaaba, yeah. which is uh, very unusual and rare for even a Muslim. Now, you're a devout Sufi. Burton was a Sufi. Has he had any, any influence on your inner life, your spiritual life? Well, I, I tell you this, uh, I'm talking to you. Yeah. You, Redmond O'Hanlon, have come all the way from uh, Holland to interview me. It is, I take it as Burton has come back to me. Ah. Oh, I'd like to be Burton. <laughs> but you look yeah. like Charles Napier more than Burton. The general, yes. <laughs> I hope Masood is wrong that the Karachi papers may never actually have been written. It makes me worry on my way back to Karachi. Am I chasing a phantom? We can be sure, however, that Burton's anthropological interest in the secrets of India led to the abrupt ending of his military career. Well, the Karachi papers eventually got the better of Burton and he had to leave the British Army. As he writes, sick, sorry, and almost in tears of rage, I bade adieu to my friends and comrades in Sindh. My career in India had been in my eyes a failure and by no fault of my own. The dwarfish demon called interest had fought against me and, as usual, had won the fight. Well, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Yes, <laughs> Thank you. Back in the hotel, there is a message waiting for me from my friend Ashok in Bombay. He tells me we have permission to visit the National Indian Archives. And according to Ashok, if there is any hope of finding the Karachi papers, it is there. I am 
very excited to be back in Bombay. After my Karachi adventure, even the Bombay traffic doesn't worry me in the least. I'm anxious to call my friend and Burton specialist, Bernie Lauser, just to check what I'll be looking for in these archives. Bernie? Uh, wonderful, it's Redmond. I'm in India and off to the archive tomorrow and I need to know what to look for, for the Karachi papers. I would go to the 1848 correspondence in the archive and um, look for the correspondence of the secret department. If we're lucky, you would find the brothel report there. Wow. Anyway, well, that's wonderful. Thank you for your help. <laughs> Tremendous. Thank you, Benny. Okay. So we are looking for any old papers submitted to the secret department, dated March or April 1848, written in Karachi by Captain Richard Francis Burton, and most probably with a neutral title, definitely no mention of prostitution or boy brothels or anything of the kind. Ah. Look at that. <laughs> British Information Services. Jeez. Oh. Reminds me too much of home. <laughs> How do I find the archives for the province of This is Sint, yeah? Oh, yes. That's, this yes. index. I, 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 that's in there. Is it all right if I wait over there or sit? Yes. Yeah? Ah, yes. Okay, thank you very okay. much indeed. Ah, oh, I feel like real research. Yes. Oh, okay. oh wow, it's huge. This in volume, yes. Ah. Mm. Yes. Ah, 1848. I'm sure this great treasure we're looking for, it's in here somewhere. Um, you better, you better close these for me. All right, I'll do it. Wow, 1848. Wow, Sind. Uh, look at this. 880, Lieutenant Burton's manuscript on the population of page 39. 880, 39. Wow, I mustn't destroy this. Well, all these, this is absolutely the right place for such a secret report. 49. A. 1848, Sint, Lieutenant Burton's manuscript on the population of... Well, let's fill it in. The homosexual brothels of Karachi. And then... Where's it? There's nothing. Gone. Something... Office memo. Lieutenant Burton's manuscript on the population of Sint, which formed an enclosure to the letter from the commissioner in Sint. Karachi, everything fits. Karachi. Uh, but it's, it's gone. Why, why is this enclosure not here? And then, and then we get to boring old Major Goodfellow. It's all just right, except that it's gone. So close, so close. But then, then again, who can say that he's hunted for crocodiles, read books to monkeys, traveled on camel cars, danced with Karachi transgenders under the nose of the Taliban, and made a Sufi pilgrimage in Pakistan? 
only to try to find a little bit of one of his heroes, Richard Francis Burton. But that's enough for now. Let's go home. Cause home is where the books are. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked it. If so, you can watch the next episode here. Or check another recommended series on our channel. And don't forget to subscribe to get updates on new series.